Hello there, my fellow Dawi, and welcome back to a lore video focusing on Warhammer Fantasy's Indomitable Dwarves. Since last time I talked about the Dark Elves and their armies and infantry, I decided to keep at it, but with a very different topic this time. Since I also haven't talked about the Dwarves in quite some time, this video felt rather appropriate. So today we're gonna talk a bit about the Dwarves' military, with a focus on their armies as a whole, as well as their, air tags, basic warriors, and the more irregular miners. I'm your host, for today the Dawi narrator, and without further ado, let us proceed, shall we? Forged by centuries of constant warfare, the dwarves have become a race of hardened warriors, who remember each and every affront ever slighted against them. Answering their High King's summons, the dwarves march from their mountain strongholds in great throngs of steel-clad infantry supported by powerful war machines of indescribable power. At the fore, mighty heroes bearing matchless runic weapons and armor stand ready to deliver the death blow that shall avenge the indignities which have befallen their entire race. Such are the constant fierce wars that these brave warriors have fought over the centuries, that each mountain kingdom is nothing more than a heavily militarized fortress city, teeming with the battle-hardened veterans of a hundred wars. Every dwarf already has the physique of a natural warrior, with body and arms as thick as a tree trunk, mental fortitude as resilient as the rock, and overlapping armor of unbreakable dwarf steel, which covers the dwarf from head to toe. However, contrary to popular belief, the dwarves don't necessarily have a standing full-time army, but instead rely on their clans to provide soldiers for them. In times of war, members of a dwarf clan will form into their own militia regiments of warriors, quarrelers, and thunderers under the leadership of a thane. Once formed up, they would rally alongside the leaders of a military expedition or campaign, and form into an army or a throng. With the master craftsmanship of the dwarves, every warrior is equipped with some of the finest weapons and armor that the world has ever known as unbreakable as the mountains themselves, and as bone-crushing as the blow of an avalanche. A dwarf warrior greatly excels at close-quarter combat, where their weapons and armor can be used to great effect, and, as such, they are expert tunnel fighters. The dwarves are also the leading experts in the most advanced technology ever possessed by a mortal race. Being the first to discover the potential of steam engines and gunpowder, the dwarves are a race of engineers as well as warriors, unsurpassed in all avenues of science and technology, and hindered only by the strict traditions imposed by their elders and society. What the dwarves make up for in strength, craftsmanship, and durability, they greatly lack in speed, magic, and numbers. The dwarves lack all kinds of cavalry and instead rely heavily on aerial support in the means of gyrocopters and gyrobombers for quick and reliable attacks and reconnaissance. Dwarves are also totally immune to the touch of magic, and thus have no magic wielders. However, they compensate this fault by using runesmiths, a dwarf with the ability to use runes which can manipulate the flow of magic for their own uses. But probably the largest weakness that befouls all the Dwarven armies is their insufficient numbers. A large army by Dwarf standards is only a few hundred strong, and this great lack of manpower, or Dwarf power really, has always hindered the Dwarves greatly, making sure that every single Dwarf lost in combat is a severe blow to both the army and the entire race. On the battlefield, dwarven armies excel as stubborn, immobile walls of powerful infantry, supported by massive batteries of lethal war machines. When fighting on the defensive, the dwarves would position themselves at the most narrow point on the battlefield, 
where they could form a shield wall of heavily armored infantry at the front, with supporting regiments of siege equipment and riflemen at the back. The tactics employed here is simple attrition, where the dwarves would stand defiantly against their enemies and absorb all of their punishment like water on rock. After several hours, the enemies would grow tired, broken, and would retreat the battlefield. When on the rare occasion the dwarves take the fight to the enemy, their armies would still fight in a tight formation, advancing against the enemy, slowly and methodically, in almost grim silence. When showered by enemy bolts, the dwarves would raise their shields and absorb the incoming missiles, while still keeping a steady and foreboding pace. As the dwarves' own missiles and artillery rains down upon the enemy, the dwarves would engage them headlong in close combat. Dwarf warriors are the most common frontline infantry of the holds, and form the overall bulk of many dwarven armies. The more elite units like the Longbeards, the Hammerers and the Iron Breakers are significantly smaller in numbers. In times of war, the leaders of the clan call the muster of any dwarf old enough to fight, to form together into regiments. Most of the individuals that will answer the call to arms are craftsmen of some sort, maybe stone carvers, brewers, minters, or more. But once they don their well-forged mail, put on their steel helm and heft an axe in hand, they leave behind the artisan turning that same industrious nature to their other calling, warfare. Dwarf warriors make formidable fighters. They are strong and highly resilient, broad of shoulders and wide of girth. Although they are by no means fast, they are physically robust, and can maintain a steady plodding pace, marching on for days on end despite being loaded down by burdens and heavy mail. When they do charge into battle, the momentum generated by their wide, armor-clad bodies is remarkable, hitting the foe with resounding force. They have broken many enemy battle lines this way, splintering elven phalanxes, carving through orc hordes, and hacking apart the great masses of the Skaven that make up their verminous armies. Any foe that has fought dwarves has quickly learned one lesson, that they should be respected. Even the elite units of other armies have met their match even against these warriors. They are grim and determined fighters, unwilling to retreat and able to advance and battle on even in the face of the greatest adversity. Stories abound about the dwarves, hopelessly outnumbered, backed into unfavorable ground and pressed on on all sides, yet somehow still they emerge triumphant. With dwarves, such suffering only serves to make them tougher, and with beards bristling and hands clenched around axe hafts and mighty hammers, the dwarves regroup to charge anew. Their feeble foes, too worn out and tired at the end to even lift their weapons, are slaughtered, save for those fast enough to flee the iron shod and implacable advance of the dwarves. All the dwarves are vengeful, hands that once crafted the most intricate of jewelry, minds that once delighted in the simplicity and timeless wonder of an exactly constructed stone pillar, now see only red ruin. Although matter of fact in their peaceful pursuits, once a dwarf snaps, his whole life collapses like an arch, with the keystone removed. The fury of a dwarf overcome with a grudge hatred is stark and harsh. They are unremitting in their violence, and at this point forgiveness is beyond an afterthought. Instead, they are grown cold, having no more mercy in them than granite. During such periods, even their allies will turn their eyes away from the cataclysmic and all-consuming wrath that the dwarves can unleash. In all but the richest of clans and holds, a dwarf is expected to supply and maintain his own arms and armor. This is not an issue, as most dwarves treat their gear of war as treasured family heirlooms, handing down axe and shield, hammer and mail coat through the generations, presenting them to a young dwarf when he comes of age. 
Some clans, like the Gold Shields or the Iron Hammers, have developed their conventional gear of war to ensure that their regiments are bold and uniform, while others show their allegiance through subtle colors or symbols. Lastly, for today, another more unusual but equally important branch of their military, the Dwarf Miners. Dwarf Miners are those irregular bands of dwarves which answer the call to battle, outfitted with their tools of the trade such as mining equipment, pickaxes, mattocks and boxes of lethal dynamite. Dwarves have an insatiable thirst for gold, and their miners construct deep shafts into the hearts of the mountains in their quest to acquire this valuable metal. They also mine for ores and gemstones, and are very skilled at digging tunnels at incredible speed. Their networks of tunnels and mines run through every mountain range. In battle they use their knowledge of the tunnels and mastery of the heavy two-handed pickaxe with deadly intent. Even the smallest of the Dwarven Holds are populated by a fair number of miners. As an underground dwelling race, Dwarves always need experts at delving into bedrock. This, coupled with the race's insatiable lust for gold, ensures that all mountain abodes are riddled with any number of deep shafts dug down in search of precious metals and gems. They also have a unique instinct for the stone knowing where best to dig and when to pause and shore up a section of a tunnel. Collapses or other accidents are extremely rare among the dwarves. The longer established a mine is, the more mechanical contrivances there will be. Steam-powered engines, fixed in position, continually hold chains which tow wagons out of the depths. Some miners even take to war with a few of their gadgets such as blasting charges or a steam drill to aid in tunneling under enemy lines. When the dwarves go to war, many mining clans form regiments to join them in battle. As a point of pride, they do not bear axes, but instead wield the same heavy two-handed mining picks and mattocks they use to laboriously carve out tunnels. As it turns out, these well-balanced and sturdily made tools work equally well whether digging into bedrock or hacking apart goblins. Because tunneling in the deeps is dangerous work, miners constantly wear armor and helms. Down the ages, this mail has served to protect them against rockfall and cave-ins, as well as turning aside such attacks as elf arrows or rusty skaven blades. Miners have a deep knowledge of subterranean tunnels, and if there is not already an easily accessible underground route to the enemy's vulnerable rear, the miners will produce one. Very few enemies react calmly to the trudge of heavy boots behind them, and many a desperate battle has been won by miners arriving in the nick of time from an unexpected quarter. Led by a prospector, the most veteran of the miners, they can wreak havoc on any foe's battle plans. And this, my friends, has been what I wanted to tell you about the Dwarven armies, their warriors and miners for today. I realize these might not be the most famous or popular unit types for this race, but I did want to make a foundation video first, if you will, before I covered their other military aspects. So do expect videos on the Iron Breakers, the Hammerers, the Thunderers, the Iron Drakes, their artillery, and more in the future. Was this video informative or entertaining? In that case, please click the like button and subscribe for future content. Thank you very much for watching to the end, and I wish you all a peaceful day. May the blessings of Grimnir, Grungni and Valea be upon you.